You fire a missile. A massive object appears on radar. A US Navy aircraft carrier, alone in open water. It's slow, it's huge, it's expensive. It should be easy to sink. One hit, and it's gone. Right? Well, not quite. Because when it comes to destroying an aircraft carrier, things aren't what they seem. You're not just fighting a ship. You're taking on an entire system. And the rules of that system? They're designed so that you never even get close. This is the story of why sinking an aircraft carrier is nearly impossible, and why trying might cost you much more than you think. They're called unsinkable. A moving airbase, the size of a skyscraper laid on its side, protected by steel, sensors, and swarms of jets. To some, aircraft carriers seem untouchable. A floating fortress immune to anything short of a nuclear strike. But here's the twist. Aircraft carriers can be sunk. In fact, navies around the world have spent decades trying to figure out how. During the Cold War, the Soviet Union developed massive torpedoes and supersonic missiles designed for one job, kill the carrier. China today has weapons that claim to do the same. Hypersonic glide vehicles, ballistic carrier killer missiles, and even swarms of drones. But there's a problem. Getting a weapon to hit a carrier is only one part of the equation. Actually sinking it and surviving long enough to do so is another. Because an aircraft carrier is not invincible, it's just incredibly well defended. And the closer you try to get, the more the ocean starts to work against you. An aircraft carrier is never where you think it is. And it's never alone. It travels with an entourage, a carrier strike group. Think of it as a heavily armed neighborhood that moves with the carrier, watches over it, and is willing to die for it. At the heart is the carrier itself, massive, loud, and slow. But around it, a destroyer with long-range missiles, a cruiser with powerful radar, a nuclear submarine you'll never see, dozens of fighter jets constantly patrolling the skies, and an invisible web of satellites, drones, and surveillance aircraft stretching across hundreds of miles. To get to the carrier, you'd have to get through all of them first. And they don't just wait for you to come. They're looking for you. Always. A missile launch? Detected. A submarine moving into position? Tracked. An aircraft on radar? Intercepted before it's even in range. This is what makes the carrier so hard to reach. Not just its size or armor, but the simple fact that it's the least vulnerable ship in its own fleet. And even if somehow you get through that, you're still not done. Because now comes the hard part, actually hitting it. Imagine trying to land a punch, but your target is behind three walls, a locked door, and a team of people trained to stop you before you even raise your hand. That's what attacking an aircraft carrier is like. Its defenses don't start at the hull. They start hundreds of kilometers away. First, there's the outer layer. Fighter jets launch from the carrier itself. They intercept threats long before they reach the group. If you're flying toward the carrier, chances are you won't even see it before you're forced to turn back or shot down. Next, there's the Aegis system, a network of radar-equipped destroyers and cruisers. They track multiple targets simultaneously and can launch interceptors within seconds. A missile flying in at Mach 5? They see it. They lock on. They fire. It doesn't get through. Then comes electronic warfare, jamming your sensors, confusing your guidance systems, breaking your lock. By the time your missile reaches the inner circle, it may not even know what it's aiming at anymore. And finally, the point defense. Close-in weapon systems, like phalanx, spitting out bullets at 4,500 rounds per minute. Missiles designed to intercept other missiles. Even laser weapons are now entering the game. It's not one wall of defense. 
It's a maze, a system where every second counts, and every layer is built to give the carrier just a little more time to survive. So even if you launch the perfect strike, fast, low, coordinated, unexpected, the question remains, can it survive the gauntlet? And if it does, what happens if the missile actually hits? Let's say you've made it through. You've evaded patrols, slipped past destroyers, outrun interceptors, survived jamming, and now your missile is finally on its way to the target. But there's one more problem. The aircraft carrier isn't where you think it is. Carriers don't stay still. They move fast. At over 30 knots, a carrier can travel nearly 60 kilometers in an hour. That's enough to completely throw off your targeting data. And in combat, it's never moving in a straight line. By the time your missile reaches its final approach, the ship could have turned, accelerated, or even vanished behind the radar horizon. To hit it, your weapon needs to see, think, and react, all in real time. And that means it's relying on sensors and guidance systems that are being jammed, tricked, or blinded. Even hypersonic missiles, flying at Mach 10, are vulnerable to deception. Because speed doesn't matter if you're not heading in the right direction. And then there's the ocean itself. Always shifting, always hiding. A splash on a radar screen might be a decoy. A signal might be fake. A heat signature might be an escort ship not the carrier. In modern warfare, information is the weapon, and the aircraft carrier plays that game very, very well. So even if you're armed with the most advanced weapons on Earth, actually hitting a moving carrier? That's a whole different war. Let's say the impossible happens. Your missile gets through. It dodges the fighters, slips past the interceptors, ignores the jammers, and slams into the carrier. Now what? Does it explode in a massive fireball? Does the ship roll over and sink beneath the waves? Not exactly. Because aircraft carriers are built to take damage and survive. These ships are designed with multiple watertight compartments, redundant systems, armored bulkheads, and automatic fire suppression. They don't just resist destruction, they expect it. Even if a missile punches through the deck, it might only cripple one part of the ship. The engines keep running, the radar keeps scanning, the aircraft keep flying. During World War II, it often took multiple torpedoes and bombs to sink a much smaller carrier. Today's carriers are more than three times bigger and far more advanced. And then there's the crew. Thousands of sailors, trained to respond to fire, flooding, and power loss within seconds. Entire teams whose only job is to keep the ship alive, no matter what hits it. So yes, you might damage the carrier. You might even force it to retreat. But sinking it outright? That takes more than just firepower. It takes time, coordination, and a level of destruction that few militaries can deliver before they themselves are destroyed. Because while you're trying to kill the carrier, the carrier is already fighting back. So if missiles, drones, and direct attacks are so unlikely to succeed, what actually can threaten an aircraft carrier? The answer doesn't always come from the sky. The real danger often comes from below, in the form of submarines. Silent, hidden, and deadly, submarines remain the one thing a carrier group fears most. They don't need to outrun fighters or dodge radar. They just wait. A single well-placed torpedo beneath the keel of a carrier can do more damage than a dozen missiles from the air. That's why carriers are always escorted by anti-submarine destroyers, helicopters with dipping sonar, and even nuclear subs of their own, running silent screens deep below. But even with all that protection, no defense is perfect. Then there are mines old-fashioned, cheap, and terrifyingly effective. A $20,000 sea mine can disable a $13 billion warship if placed in the right spot. And the threats keep evolving. Cyber attacks, 
capable of confusing targeting systems or disabling communication. Swarm drones, attacking from all angles to overwhelm defenses. Ballistic missiles with maneuverable re-entry vehicles, launched from thousands of kilometers away. All of them are being developed with one goal in mind. Get past the carrier's defenses before the carrier gets to you. But here's the catch. Even if one of these methods works, it has to work first. Because once the carrier detects the threat, it launches its own counter-strike. And by then, it might already be too late. Let's imagine for a moment that you actually do it. You sink a US aircraft carrier. One of the most powerful symbols of American military might. Thousands of sailors on board, billions of dollars lost in a single explosion. What happens next? It's not just a military event, it's a political earthquake. Because an attack on a carrier isn't just an attack on a ship, it's an attack on everything that ship represents. Power projection, global presence, nuclear deterrence, national pride. And in many ways, that's exactly why aircraft carriers are so valuable. They don't just carry aircraft, they carry consequences. Sinking one would likely trigger full-scale retaliation, military, economic, and political. It could start a regional war, or worse, something global. That's the paradox. Carriers are built for war, but they exist mostly to prevent it. Their presence sends a message. We're here, we're ready, think twice. And that message is often more effective than any weapon on board. So even if you had the perfect plan, the perfect weapon, and the perfect moment, you'd still have to ask, is it worth it? Because long before you face the carrier's defenses, you face the decision to attack it. And once you cross that line, you can't take it back. So, can you sink an aircraft carrier? Technically, yes. With enough firepower, planning, and a little bit of luck, even the most advanced ship can be destroyed. But that was never really the question. Because sinking a carrier isn't just about getting past missiles, jammers, destroyers, and submarines. It's about getting past an entire system, one that's designed to absorb hits, respond instantly, and strike back with overwhelming force. It's about navigating a battlefield that begins long before the shooting starts, in satellites, supply chains, intelligence, and diplomacy. It's about playing a game that doesn't end when a ship goes down, but might begin there. And that's what makes aircraft carriers so hard to destroy. Not because they're indestructible, but because they're not just ships. They're strategy. They're leverage. They're a warning. So the next time you see one moving slowly across the ocean, deck full of planes, engines humming, flags flying, just remember, it's not what you think.